Y'all go, yo. I said I was gonna um, come back and do part two of the occult wisdom of spirituality. Just haven't had no time to do so. I thought, hey, why not today? This is a nice spot. So yeah, continuing from our conversation, I think last time, last time I gave a brief uh, understanding on the concept of how we go about perceiving things, therefore defining things, therefore experiencing reality, yeah, and we spoke to the fact that our human capability is a small fraction of, or, or sorry, our human capability of perceiving reality is very limited. You understand what I'm saying? Very limited. And so we spoke about the electromagnetic spectrum and how visually we just pick up on 5% of that. Right? Everything that you see. The trees, the birds, the animals, the light. It's all based upon us being able to perceive 5% of light. Therefore, in the grand scheme of things, we don't really have the ability or right even to say this is light and that is dark. Because everything that we are calling dark is simply light beyond our human capability of perceiving it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, moving forward with that conversation, when you bring that understanding into what is being referred to as shadow work, right? Shadow work, which I'm sure many of you have come across, yeah? When you bring that understanding into shadow work, then the whole definition of shadows or darkness takes on a different perspective. And so I think I mentioned that... What 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 people are, what people are calling shadow work is really illumination work. You're going into areas of yourself that have been kept hidden, out of sight, or remain in the dark. Do you understand what I'm saying? But again, our definition of darkness is simply light that we cannot perceive. And so, going into shadow work. Well, first and foremost. This whole spiritual game is about oneness, yeah? It's about being holistic. It's about the integration of polarity, whether you call it masculine and feminine, yin, yang, good, bad, light, dark, negative and positive. Spirituality is about finding that middle point or zero point or still point whereby all dualities cease to be and it's only that one, that oneness remaining, right? And so, if that's the goal of spirituality, then we have to seek this oneness through all things, right? And so, that is to say, there is an understanding that there is no such thing as good and bad, because it's all one, right? It's all one. However, that understanding... It's quite difficult to comprehend if you haven't integrated your own internal duality. Your own concepts of being good and being bad, right? A lot of our definitions of these things are very external. And so we focus on the external world to go about unifying these polarities or trying to gain the understanding that there isn't one or the other, right? Now, there's a big difference between relative truth and, let's say, absolute truth. So, relatively, we all understand and know that there are many things that can be classed as good or bad. So, obviously, we're not, we're not speaking about, you know, the basic understanding, but we're trying to elevate the conversation, right? And so, 
there's a difference between relative, your relative or individual understanding and the absolute or cosmic understanding or cosmic awareness. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, when we go to try to comprehend this idea that there isn't any good or bad, our thoughts automatically think of events or things outside of ourselves, right? But you want to now have an introspective lens and start going internally. I think I said mentioned last time that this whole game starts with you being honest and open with self, having a simple conversation with yourself, right? But keep in mind that the game is wholeness, yeah? The game is wholeness. The game isn't about getting rid of one particular side for another side. It's about recognizing the do the 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 oneness in the duality over making sense yeah i'm going somewhere so bear with me and so having that understanding what the alchemists or the mystics would do in regards to integrating their own polarity whether that's good or bad or light or dark or wrong or right is first understanding that there isn't two and if there isn't two, or better yet, let's say that the two are intimately connected. That you can't have light, yeah, without the concept of darkness. You can't have good without a bad, just like you can't have an up without a down, a left without a right. And so that says that these concepts are intimately connected. We see this through symbols like the yin and yang, for example, right? Where in the yang, yang, you see a little bit of yin, and within the, in the yin, you see a little bit of yang. So they're explaining that these things are one and the same. You can't separate them. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, with that understanding, then anything that I consider negative, or bad, or dark, or wrong, is intimately connected to its polarity. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right? Intimately connected with their polarity and so the mystic or the alchemist understood that these the transmutation of good or, or bad into good or negative into positive is only based on perception do you understand what i'm saying that transmutation would take place in the perception the mind the consciousness of self not anything external physically by looking at yourself, yeah? And so with this understanding now, when you're doing shadow work, those aspects or areas of yourself that are considered negative, you start to understand or approach them with the understanding that these things are intimately connected. Meaning that what I see as a obstacle, if I just shift my perception, now becomes a stepping stone. Do you understand what I'm saying? So... Technically, the greater the obstacle, yeah, the, the greater the trauma, the greater the, 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 the negative shadow aspects would mean the greater the opposite. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the greater the opposite. Now, let's bring this understanding closer to home so we can kind of now embed these understandings, yeah? When you start taking a look at spirituality from a psychological aspect, things start to get a little bit more interesting. Because spirituality, or the concept of spirituality, can be very... Um, see the spirits there today? <laughs> yes, I... Could be very airy-fairy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Non-graspable. However, when you're talking about psychology... Well, everybody knows that they have a psyche. It's not really that deep. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so you're starting to deal with, uh, start to deal with aspects of the mind. I'm saying this to say, because I'm aware I'll, I will be here for a little while if I if I really go into it in depth. In fact, this is the whole reason why I created, I created university, these courses and classes, so we can start unpacking some of these understandings. But quickly. From a psychological point of view, there is an aspect of the mind called the DMN, yeah? 
the default mode network and they say this is responsible for your negative self-talk however what they've realized or what they've discovered is that this area of the brain is developed very young in childhood now this is important because it's your childhood whereby you started to started to define or get your concepts or understandings of what is good and what is bad and that was simply based on your needs either being met or not met and so psychologically you would start creating character traits that were in line with what your needs were and start disassociating with behaviors or character traits that don't get you don't get you your needs do you understand what I'm saying, right? They also, they understand that it is in your childhood whereby your ego comes online. Because your ego is directly connected to this physical aspect called the DMN, the default mode network. Yeah, we can say that is a part or a physical manifestation of the ego, if you will, right? However, when you was a child... When you was a child, you developed certain mechanisms in order for you to survive this world. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so there were certain needs that needed to be needed to be met. Simply needed to be met. You couldn't compromise on your food, on your shelter, on your clothing. These are just basic certain things. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying all of this to say. I'm trying to give the shortcut microwave version that a lot of those traits that are considered negative in your adulthood were simply behaviors that were created in your early childhood to protect you and to serve you and make sure that your needs were met do you understand what i'm saying right so these programs these behaviors or deep beliefs or habits that we may associate with being negative were simply things that were created to protect you. So when you start to have this kind of understanding, when you approach shadow work, because all you're really doing is approaching your inner child to have a conversation or your ego, you're not, you, you, this understanding now allows you to approach self from a non-judgmental perspective. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you now understand that that particular behavior that you just don't, you don't know why you do or you don't like or whatever it may be, you understand that it was a defense mechanism. And so you're trying to have a conversation with your younger child now, your inner child or your ego to say, thank you. I understand why this was created, but it's no longer needed now. Do you understand what I'm saying? The transmutation takes place in understanding, not in getting rid of a thing or trying to turn this particular thing into this particular thing. It's the understanding that this is the thing, right? But it's shrouded in darkness, let's say, which is simply a lack of understanding or ignorance, let's say. And what you're trying to do is now step into that place so you can understand it so then you get the perspective, oh, wait a minute, what I thought was dark was actually true light. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we know this by just observing the stars at night. If you were to look up at night, you're surrounded by billions, billions of suns, right? Billions of different light frequencies, yeah? UV rays and X-rays and all of these different light emissions, yet still what we predominantly see is darkness maybe darkness is really light maybe <laughs> do you know what i mean but um i got my didgeridoo i'm about to start all the little all the little meds in the woods but i hope this helped i hope this clarified a little bit but like i said these are these are things that i get into further in class you understand what i'm saying and we spend a good amount of time just unpacking what spirituality is from a cosmological level, a psychological level, a, a um, emotional level, a mental level, just so we can have the understanding and start to 
transmute some of our definitions. That's what really needs to take place. We're trying to become the alchemists to, 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 to do all of these grandiose transformations. But what really needs to be transform, transformed is your definition of things, your understanding of things. Start with, starting with the basics. Starting with the basics. Do you understand what I'm saying? And having those open and honest conversations. Yeah? Alright. Peace.